Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 31 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. Alright, yeah I know, I started the last video off, I just did two number 29 videos. Maybe you all were paying attention, maybe you weren't. I'm not going to do a retake just for one word, it doesn't make any sense. So, um, we'll move forward. I'd like to say I've covered the vast majority of the basis or the, the, the primary knowledge that you're going to need going forward as a stone carver um, and as a sculptor uh, in terms of the mechanics of being in the studio and working with the tools. Uh, I, I, I'll reiterate one more time, if you skip around, you're going to get into a problem because you're not going to know how to solve everything. And some people may be more experienced than others and you can do a lot of things, uh, but if you can't square a panel, cut a panel from a rough stone like I showed you, um, then doing these other things are, are going to, you're going to get into bad spots with them. It's going to be hard to solve them. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to ruin a stone. Uh, or two or three or ten. Um, some people cut for a long time and they wreck a lot of stones and they there's there can be real consequences to that. So um, you need to be consistent. You need to be thorough. Um, and like I've said over and over again, you need to pay attention and look at everything. If I had these videos to look at when I was starting, I would have been just obsessing to the point of being a nut job over every little detail in the background. I'd be looking at every tool, every square inch of space, what's this for, what's that for, why did, the reason I do that, just like I mentioned in the, in the compass video, Andy figured out those beam compasses, because him and Phil had to cut the Italian stone and bury, that's, that's huge, and they had to have something bigger to do it with. And Andy figured out those beam compasses from that old postcard of Fantoni, used them on a statue. Once they had that, it worked good. I did look, I found the picture of, of Dante working on that, um, that Mercedes limousine, and uh, he, he didn't have any beam compasses. He had some compasses, some of these. And the thing I was thinking about was the big chassis, big croce for the uh, pointing machine that he used. So um, we'll, we'll address that. But um, if you've been paying attention, you've probably noticed something in the background in uh, most of these, many of my videos, whether they're the apprenticeship videos or whether they're the other ones. And the other videos, there's a lot of content in those too. I'm not going to redo them just to put them in the apprenticeship stuff. They're out there, they're on my channel about hand machines and chisels and how to do different processes and there's some very involved long things of casting models. There's no need for me to redo all that. If you don't have the initiative to study this and learn how to do it, I can't make it happen for you. You've got to show up and you've got to perform. So um, it's there for you. Free of charge, Bubby. If you, uh, if you don't think it's worth it, skip it. Go do something else. Um, but uh, for those that are paying attention and those that do think it's important, this board back here, it's got the gargoyle on it. And then I stuck the clay for the uh, hummingbird on there because I didn't have time to cast it yet. We're going to put it to use today because we've got to construct a triangle that we're going to use for the angel project. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to make a model for the angel. The job is, is the stone is six foot tall. She's going to have a six inch plinth at the bottom. So I can plan on it being five, six or six foot. It's just, I'm just going to do it six foot because it's easy. I'm going to do a two thirds scale model. Um, and correct it in terms of ratio of the foreshortening so that the foreshortening will work out to eight inches when I enlarge it. Now, two thirds of eight, that's kind of a pain. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the triangle up and then I can figure that out from the triangle 
make a screed or, or a standoff so I know exactly how tall I've got, how much room I've got to work with. And that's very easy to just make the model within those parameters. Uh, so, uh, but this board, we'll see how this comes apart. This one's no big deal. the pointing machine, the nail, the screws are still in there. That's where I put them. I use screws on that, I can adjust the height, then I plaster them in really well. Maybe you've noticed already. See that black stripe? You see that black stripe? No stripe? And I can put my caliper right there, right there. That's my board. I don't use a piece of marble here in South Carolina. Just don't have it. But I do have a big sheet of plywood screwed to the wall. And what we're going to do, it's got an origin point up here. It's not too exhausted yet. I've used it some. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, through the magic of video, I'm going to go get my sanding something, sandpaper, whatever. I'm going to clean this off and brighten it up. We're going to take our compasses, put them in our nail, and we're going to make our triangle just like we did on a piece of paper. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break here, clean this up to get rid of this old triangle, move the camera, get back to work we're gonna start working we've covered most of the basics now it's time to get to work and so videos going forward in this series are going to be more about sort of looking over my shoulder as I work than me slowing down and giving you instructions I've done that it's your time to start learning something put all this stuff to work if you haven't squared a block or at least done a panel or two you need to and then work on pointing and everything look at the other videos I've done start studying because it's time to go to work. Went ahead and brutalized this piece of plywood a little bit to get rid of some of the old swipes. And I wrecked the nail because the better thing to do, I wanted to eliminate these lines to a certain extent and the marks that were related to them, the, the strikes that were, like these strikes, some of them are kind of deep because they're sharp tools. Went ahead and drilled a new roofing nail, just drilled a divot, and I'll put it in below the old one so that I can start new and then any lines should be separate from, from these old lines that are on here because I got rid of most of them, but you, you don't want to have a mistake. And I think I've still got enough room. I may have to drop these hangers just to get them out of the way and then put them back on. We'll see how it goes. And we'll start our triangle. Now we're going to start setting up our calipers for our triangle. Put our nail where we're not going to lose it. We pull this out. Because I'm going to do the model on a four foot piece, because this is two thirds, it's real easy. I'm going to have a six inch plinth on the job, and so I can have a four inch plinth on the model. And so that's why I'm doing it in two, approximate two-thirds scale. So we're going to set this up to 48 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to 49 and measure off of the... Uh, one inch mark on this ruler instead of measuring off of the end of the, the tape measure because that's inherently inactive because that hook moves around. So we're going to get set up here.
We measured a 49 on the same side of the ruler and 48. And then we're going to tighten these up like our life depended on. And I've got a wrench for this. I've got to find it. I, I had one. I think I gave it to somebody that was really impressed with it. It's not real complicated to make a wrench. Then I'm going to check my 49 in it. Make sure that it's right on the money. Yep, that's good. So let's go over and just do a preliminary swipe on this triangle to see how it's going to look. Let's see where we are. Okay, we're out here, so I'm probably going to go ahead. Well, looks like I can probably get around. Get around these hangers. So we know that one's good. We'll go ahead and try to move the crane just a little bit. Went ahead, spec this out, drove my nail very carefully so I wouldn't booger up the, the hole I've got in the nail. And I set a caliper to six foot, because that's the height of my job. Set a caliper to four foot, which you saw me a minute ago. That's the height of the model. We're gonna go in the in the divot. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna strike a mark to just cut a line on the plywood. Set this out of the way for a second. Then we'll do the same thing. Make sure that we're on the same line, same distance. If you bump it, you got to check it. Come over here. Strike a line, okay? We set this one aside. Now we're going to put this Locate it in one of the lines. It doesn't matter which one. And then we've got to come over here and find it. It looks like I've swung. I've got to go a little bit lower. So we're going to have to move these around. So I'm going to pull these off and uh, be right back. Because it's got to go a little bit deeper than I thought. These hooks are fabricated to be attached from the front, so I don't have to pull this off in order to service it. And that's really important. That's why I like screws. Is because it's really easy to work with. Modify things the way you need it to be modified. I moved it up a little bit. Strip those off. I'm too old to bend over for all that stuff, so I don't have to. The line's great. Let's strike this down a little bit further because we were too horizontal with it to start with. So we got our arc there. And we got our arc here. Make sure we stay in our hole while we're cutting it. Strike our line. And now I'm going to play with this just a little bit with my six foot. I'll put it in the cut on one end and see where I'm at on the other end. Because I'd like to be kind of level with this line. I'll probably get my big straight edge out here. But see, that'll connect those lines perfectly. And so I'm going to just play with this with my long straight edge just a little bit to see if I can get it to be pretty close to level. Because it, it isn't critical. See that still? That's pretty close right there. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and mark these two spots with my pencil. Put a hole right there. Put a hole right there. 
and I've got my marks. So I'm going to I'm going to go get a, a ballpoint pen because I like to put it on with ink. It doesn't rub off as much, and that's about as precise as you can get on the plywood. So we'll go find a new ballpoint pen that's happy, and we'll be right back. Got a nice pen. Now it's not. Some of this is, is aesthetic. You don't have to have this vertical. Like I put that nail and I level the top of this to have this kind of even. And then I held a straight edge across my six foot measure to try to get the bottom even because that can rock either way up and down those two arcs and still be an accurate triangle. But if your triangle is real steep here and real tall here, it can be wonky and it'll mess with your head. I'm not smart enough to be confused. I have to have it right. So I went ahead and tried to make it pretty even. And we'll uh, double check this to make sure that I'm right where I want to be. And remember what I said, we're not going to actually use this bottom line for any great value. Um, it's what it is. It's there. See, that's right where I'm supposed to be. Setting this up is really important. Because these lines can run wild. So we'll go on here. We'll set this up. We'll get that right where it needs to be. Press against it and have at least one or two fingers. I like to have two fingers behind it so it can't move. And then press down hard on top to make sure it's right where you want it to be. Don't trace it all over the place. Get one nice line on there with your ballpoint pen. You come over here and do the other thing the same way. Now we have our triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and mount my hooks down below here. You know, I'll drop them down probably that much just so they're out of the way. I shouldn't have to go past that six foot dimension at the very base of this where there's a cross on that arc because that's as big as my job is. And, and because my, if that's as big as the stone is, uh, I may have to reach around, but I'm probably not going to be significant long. You can always carry those lines past as long as you want. But now I've got my line to mark on. So let's put this together. I'll be back in a minute and we'll do our first measurement. We'll shoot our first thing off of this so we can get started on the clay. Got it all put back together, hung up, lug screws, it's just great. Now we're going to do our first capture, to calculate our first dimension. And we're going to go a little backwards on this. Okay, I need 8 inches. 8 inches is the profile on my bow relief in the finished job. It's going to be 5, 6, but the profile is going to be 8 inches. Okay. I need to know what two-thirds of eight inches is because I'm going to do a four-foot model for a six-foot stone. And two-thirds of eight, and I know I can type it into a calculator with 16 decimal points. I don't have time for that stuff. All right? So we're going to go up here. We're going to swipe lines. We're going to take our tape measure. We're going to put it up here to where eight inches is. 
And then we're going to try to get it to be exactly the same between each leg. So if eight is there, over here it's a little bit low, which means I got to tip my ruler just a little bit to change it, to, to balance it out, to make it even. And the best way to do it is not to go from zero to eight, but to go from one to nine. So we account for the error in the end of the ruler that my grandfather always told me, kick my butt if you ever find me using the end of a ruler for something because they're not accurate, especially a tape measure. All right, that right there is the same from one side to the other. So that's how tall my bow relief has to be. And it comes out to be in five and about three eighths, somewhere is in that range. Not quite three eighths. It looks like it's probably um, like nine. Boy, yeah, it's just under under three eighths. So it'd be whatever it is. It's that. I don't even have to think about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a riser, a standoff that's exact. I'm going to put this away. Okay. Probably go up here and strike a couple of lines. Just so those are my first two strikes on this new cross, on this new triangle. So I can go back here and know that this is the height that I need for my clay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting the bat up, getting the board all ready, and I'm gonna make um, a screed or standoff or whatever that's, about, that's this tall. And then I can put this over my clay and wherever I work, as long as it doesn't exceed that, if I'm within that, it's going to be foreshortened in the correct ratio to enlarge it to 8 inches. Now, this won't work if I want to enlarge the model to a different size. If I went to 7 foot, it wouldn't stay at 8 inches. So this is a little fiddly, but um, this is what you do. You do it with a triangle, and you do it with some compasses, okay? You don't just hold it up there and hope it comes out right. So we'll correct the model, then we'll enlarge it for this job. The likelihood I'll ever sell another one just like that, who knows? Probably not. Probably just one because that's the way custom work goes. But um, this is how you do it. This is going to work. So from here on out, the videos are going to change a little bit. Uh, you've got 31 videos in this series to start. Uh, you know, a couple of introduction ones are just me talking. And then everything else is, is good content. And there's a whole bunch of videos that I posted in the past that cover a lot of what I've talked about and some that I have in like the hand machine video and the chisel video and there's a lot of stuff like that with uh, how to do it more in depth work on the plumb block with a tulip bevel. Um, study them, look at them and learn how to do this work. And then we're gonna start doing this big angel here. I, I've got a little cross we've got to do that just sold a marble cross. It's gonna come in a restoration job because it's been it's been <laughs> serious of compromise by 130 or 50 years out in the weather. And so we're going to carve a marble out of Carrara, uh, Colorado Yule to replace a Carrara Marble Cross. And uh, I've got to basically reconstruct the design because there's a lot of loss. And so we'll have that for a video. But that basically all comes off of squaring that block. It's, we're cutting panels and squaring things up. And I'll show you how to do it. And like I said before, I like to get paid. So I'm going to show you on pay and work as I can. You can look over my shoulder, see how it actually happens, and know that I'm not just making something to put in my yard or give to my mother or whatever so it goes away. This is real work. This is how it's got to be done, and there's no sugar coat. This is going to be the real thing. So um, hang in there. I went through and looked at the video, you know, doing all the editing and stuff, and wanted to add a couple things here right at the end just to keep people patient while you're waiting for the next video to come out because it'll probably be a couple of months before this stone's here and ready to cut and things are done and it won't happen tomorrow. Uh, I know in a year it'll look like it happened instantly, but it ain't that way in real life. A quick recap. We constructed our isosceles triangle, okay? We're gonna take a measurement from our model. We're gonna assume that I went over here and I took a measurement and this is my measurement, okay? Whatever it is. 
we're going to put it on a correctly constructed model in the origin point we're going to strike a line and we're going to strike a line okay we're going to set that one aside that's our model measurement and we're going to take a different caliper or compass and we're going to go between those two lines And we're going to go to each strike, and we're going to capture those lines. The same thing that we did when we constructed the triangle. That's our enlarged dimension that we apply to the job. That's how this works. Now, I'm not going to show you how to swing calipers to do all of it right now because I don't have a stone here. I'm not going to make one up just for the fun of it. We're going to be doing it for real just a little bit. Hang out and wait. But that's how you use the triangle to apply a dimension from your model and then to expand and calculate the new capture that on the triangle to apply to your job. That's how this works. Um, I wanted to also mention the anything for a factor greater than two. Remember where we did the triangle where we walked along the bottom and then we swung the top and drew a line diagonal. Okay, that will work for any triangle, anything you do that's not either, that's, that's greater than 200%, that's not, a, that's not a whole number. If it's just a whole number, all you have to do is walk along a straight edge, two, three, and then you expand your caliper to capture that whole multiplied dimension. If you have a, say we're going to multiply something, we're going to need a triangle for something that we're going to enlarge between four and five times, we construct that triangle by going one, two, three, four, striking our edge up here, and then drawing our long hypotenuse, long edge of the triangle, the job edge, to do that mark. And then every time we took a dimension off the model, we would go one, two, three, four, and then the, the last one we'd strike up here onto the, the job line. Okay, so go back and review that in, the, in video number two, video 30, where I was constructing triangles, and that's how you do it. And then whatever value is struck on that job line, then you expand that to your origin. That's your calculated value. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Once again, my name's Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. I'm a grant sculptor with a virtual stone carving apprenticeship telling you how to actually do work with compasses and triangles. And so we'll come back in a, in a little bit as soon as this, we'll probably have video next of doing clay because I got to scale that up. But um, until we get to actually swinging the compasses on stone, just do some studying. Thanks for coming in.